knowing that we would not have anything, especially no life, had not we been blessed by the best into his precious, precious salvation. Amen? Amen. Today, as the Lord allows, we are back in the Gospel of John. And our scripture reading will be coming out of chapter 9, beginning at verse 13. That should be page 788 if you're using a pew Bible. Thank you, Lord. Gospel of John, chapter 9. As we continue our study in this great gospel, and, and we know throughout Christ's earthly ministry, he's had adversaries that have been trying to come against him, go against him, and and it's no different here as we in chapter 9, beginning at verse 13. If you have that, please say amen. Amen. Chapter 9, beginning at verse 13, and page 788 if you're using a pew Bible. Yes. 788. And here, beginning at verse 13, again, um, I see a few pages still turning on. I'll, I'll wait a bit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And we see, we, we, we know that Christ has just healed another man and, and given him his sight back. We saw that last week. And, and there's all kinds of uh, issues in regard to it. And listen, they're more concerned about when he did what he did than they are the actual miracle. They have an issue, of course, with Christ and all throughout his earthly ministry, they've been trying to find something to get on him so that they, they could do ultimately what they did anyway, which was to crucify him. And in verse 13, it says, they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. Now, nobody would take his word for it. Everybody, all he said is that Christ came, he put mud in my eyes, he told me to wash, and when I washed the mud away, I could see. And so they bring them to these guys, and we know that's when the trouble is really going to start. In verse 14, it says, And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. And guys, we saw last time when it was on the Sabbath, and he healed the man, and, and listen, had an infirmity, and told him to walk. And, and their issue again was that he was breaking the Sabbath. And we see the same thing here. In verse 15, he said, Then, then again, the Pharisees also asked him, how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, he put clay upon mine eyes, and I wash, and I do see. And listen, he's going to repeat this over and over, and I'm not sure what part of miracle they don't understand, but, but they still are trying to find something to accuse Christ with, so they continue their dialogue with this man. In verse 16, therefore it said, some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God. And listen, not talking about the man that was healed, but talking about Christ, because he keepeth not the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. And listen, no kidding. Every time Christ comes on the scene, and guys, even for us today, we said this last week, if you invoke the name of Jesus Christ, it's going to be different in various opinions but nobody's going to be neutral when it comes to this God man, Amen. Christ Jesus. In verse 17, it said, They said unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? And he said, He is a prophet. And listen, this blind man didn't know a whole lot about Christ. But what he did know is that he wasn't just an everyday ordinary man that came down the street that this God man was something special about him and, and listen, even elevated him to the position of prophet and, and, and he was one third right because he's not just a prophet, he's a prophet, he's a priest and he's a king, the only one to hold all three offices at the same time. So he recognizes that this man is a spiritual man. In verse 18 he says, but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called his parents of him that had received his sight. And, and again, now they're going to drag his parents in there. Number one, everyone has seen this guy out here. He couldn't do anything else for a living. So he would come out here and he would beg or, 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 or ask for money. That's all he could do. They would lead him out there. And, and listen, they all knew who this guy was, but, but they're not taking his word for it. First-hand account, by the way. 
In verse 19, he says, And they asked him, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? And, and, and listen, they're, they're coming to his parents. His parents weren't there. And, and, and listen, it would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic that they're trying their best to undo or unroot what Christ has done and, and not realize this miracle. In verse 20, it says, His parents asked him to answer them and said, we know that, look, this is our son, and that he was born blind. And, and listen, that's all really they're prepared to say. They weren't there. They don't know what happened, and indeed don't want to get in, in between the, uh, these Pharisees and Christ. And in verse 22, it said, but, what, but by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak the verse says, for himself. In verse 22, he said, these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. And listen, not just all the Jews, these Jewish leaders, these Pharisees. It says, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, talking about Jesus, if any man said that he was the Christ, it says he should be put out of the synagogue. And so these folk, look, they're trying to keep folk from saying what's true. And, and listen, even if, the, whether they believe it or not, they're trying to, to take the truth and, and veil it or disappear, make it disappear or, or, or cover it up. And, and guys, it's not so unlike our time today. They don't want you to call illegalities. They want you, they want you to give another name and make it sound better. They, they don't want to say that someone's living in sin or, or, or fornicating. They want to say, oh, oh, oh they're shacking or, or, or they're just getting together with themselves. And listen, they come up with all kinds of things, just like these guys that try to quote the truth. But it's a funny thing about truth, guys. Yeah. It will always rise to the top, and it will always show itself to be what it is. In verse 23, he says, therefore his parents, Amen. therefore said, I'm sorry, his parents, he is of age, ask him. And then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. In other words, they want him to say something that's not true. And in verse 25, he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, the man says, I know not. He says, one thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. And listen, that's the proof that's in the pudding. He said, look, I came here blind. This man laid hands on me, put mud in my eyes, told me to watch, and now I see that I know, that I can tell you. Anything else he's saying that I can't tell you. And of course, these Pharisees, they just don't want to receive the truth that's right in their midst. Because I, I had an opportunity uh, uh, over this weekend to to be a blessing to somebody. Brother Scott had a, a family he's been ministering to and, and, and the wife is sick, in fact, deathly sick. And, and, and it, it came to a head in regard to where they are in Christ and, and he invited me over with him and, and we went by there and, and we spoke with the, with the couple, not just the couple, we spoke with a whole room full of folk because all her family was there. And, and, and so it had an opportunity, we had an opportunity to speak to her, to speak to them about Christ and the funny thing is she, she didn't have a quite a, a thorough understanding about what this salvation was all about. And so we had an opportunity to explain it to her, to help her to understand even that much more. And, and listen, the Lord had already been working on her heart, working on her husband's heart, and I dare say working on some of the family's heart. And, and we introduced her to Christ. We explained the way of Christ to her that much more clearly. And in her own words, she invited Christ into her heart. And listen, just like this man is saying that all he knows is that one day he was blind, but now I see this young lady who's on her deathbed. And look, we're praying that the Lord raise her up and heals her. We don't know. But she's received him for her Savior, and now her heart is fixed. And I dare say as much as she don't want to leave this life, if the Lord takes her, she's going to be okay with that. Amen. 
And, and, and therein lies the blessing. And look, we not only got a chance to speak to her, but a whole room full of folk got a dose of the gospel. In fact, some stopped me on the way out, and I dare say that those seeds that were planted, that the Lord's going to do something with them as well. Amen. And listen, my prayer for them and for us is that if we don't know nothing else about the Lord, we ought to know that once I was blind, but now I see, which happens to be the topic of our sermon, part two. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for the, for the ministry of, of your word and the ministry, Father God, of your spirit and your son. And Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ for these that are assembled here on this day, Father, that you <coughs> ordained them to be here. And Father, I don't know exactly what they need or, or, or exactly where their hurt is or, or exactly, Father God, even how to pray for them. But what I do know is that this truth that we're getting ready to look at is going to be a blessing to my heart, a blessing to their heart. And I pray, Father God, that as we wrote, look through these words and look through these truths, that, Father God, you'll pull out these nuggets and place them in our hearts, in our walk, in our life, dear Lord, where they would do the most good. For some, Father God, it will be for deliverance. For some, it perhaps will be for answered prayer. For all, dear Lord, we pray it is for wisdom and growth in you. As we pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake, amen. Amen. And amen. As we continue right into verse 26, if you're with me, please say amen. 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 And, and John writes here, he says, then said they to him, still talking to the man, what did he to the, what did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? And, and guys, again, uh, give me a break. He, he's answered this question time and time. I don't know what they think he's going to do, change it up or slip up. I don't know. But they continue to answer because, look, it couldn't just be the fact that he indeed is the Savior and indeed by, by miraculous means has healed this man. It couldn't be that. It couldn't be, and listen, as we talk to the world, it, it, it couldn't be that, that the way I need to get off or get these sins off of me to, to simply believe on the finished works of Christ. It can't just be that. And, and listen, these hard-hearted Pharisees are stuck in their unbelief and, and will not see or hear the truth. And they want to hear this man say this, this same story over and over and over again. In verse 27, it says, he answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore, he says, would ye hear it again? And then he almost, he's ridiculing them a little bit. He says, will ye also be his disciples? And listen, that's kind of, you can almost sense the sarcasm in his voice because he's tired of telling the story over and over. It's not going to change. And he's beginning to realize that these guys aren't going to change either. In verse 28, he said, then they revile him. And in other words, they came back at him. It says, and said, thou art his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. And listen, all of a sudden, in verse 28, they're trying to act like they're getting a little spiritual. They're saying, look, we're disciples of Moses. We don't know this man you're talking about. And it would be like somebody saying, all right, put that in your pipe and smoke it, if indeed you can. In verse 29, he says, we know that God spake unto Moses, as for this fellow, talking about Jesus, we know not from whence he is. And, and listen, they're saying we don't know who this Jesus is. Is he from Galilee? Is he from Bethlehem? We don't even know. All of a sudden, he's just on the scene. And, and, and guys, I would submit that that's the issue for these guys, as well as the issue for the folk of the world, that, that they don't know who Jesus is. Amen. Because if they knew who he was, indeed they would be falling down and bowing at his feet as well and would be saying, my God and my Savior, but they don't. So they won't acknowledge him. And hallelujah, they will not acknowledge him. In verse 30, it says, the man answered and said unto them, why herein is a marvelous thing. In, in other words, what, what the man is saying, look, something miraculous here is happening. This is a marvelous thing. He said that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened my eyes. And listen, 
listen, what he's saying is you don't even know who he is. I don't know who he is, but he comes and he touches me and he gives me direction and I'm obedient to his direction and where I was blind, now I see. And guys, I would, I dare say even in our lives, we struggle with different various things. We carry sometimes sin on us and, and, and listen, we have an issue sometimes, a problem, breaking out of sin cycles that, that perhaps is generationally long. And, and listen, I would submit that perhaps that in our lives, in our walk with Jesus Christ, if we would submit our whole lives to him and hallelujah, do the things that he's telling us to do in our lives, that look, we've been going left and, and he's urging us to go right that we're on a track because that's the way we want to go. And, and the Lord is saying, no, that's not where I want you to be. Or, or listen, perhaps you're, you're, you're hanging on or hanging out with some folks that are only dragging you down. And perhaps the Lord is saying, no, give them to me and you serve me. Leave them alone. You can't fix them. Perhaps. Perhaps, and listen, I know in my life, I, there's a lot of things that I want to do. There's something that I was almost, and i got to say it this way, hell-bent on doing because I wanted to do it. But it's not what the Lord had for me to do. And, and listen, I'm not even talking about sinful things. But I am talking about the paths of our lives and, and where the Lord would have us to be. And, and guys, still understanding that, look, he is the potter, and we are the clay. And listen, he, as his children, he directs his children to go different and various places and do different and various things for him. And what I find is that when I submit myself to the Lord, that I'm blessed of him and that my life goes oh so much easier when I'm going his way. And listen, what I find out is that the path he had for me, it always works out better than the one I had for myself Amen. every time. Amen. Amen. My God, it does. Perhaps, even in our lives, we need to submit ourselves fully to the Lord and be obedient. In verse 31, it says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, Look what it says, him he heareth. Verse 32, he says, since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? And listen, what he's saying, look, you guys have never seen this before. You've never heard of this before. And along comes this Jesus, and he heals, and he blesses, and he gives sight to the blind. And guys, that, that's the kicker, not only physical sight, but spiritual sight as well. Amen. Man, a lot of things in my life I didn't even see as sin. But man, the Lord, he blessed me and saved me and his spirit lives inside of me. And, and man, I am so 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 aware of sin right now. And I'm talking about my own sin. I ain't looking for yours. <laughs> I got enough to deal with on myself. And I know that it comes straight from the pits of hell and it deals with my thoughts, my words, and my deeds, and, and sometimes my ugly attitude that the Lord says that, Brother Ralph, that's unlike me. You need to shut it down and get rid of it. And he does that. And he makes me aware of that. And he shows me something. And, and, and listen, I got a wife. And she points out things in my life. But, 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 but listen, what I tell her is, babe, I, I love you, but, but you know, you really aren't the Holy Spirit. And when it's time for, for me to deal with these things or some things, I'm going to deal with them in God's time. Yeah. And guess what? I'm sometimes trying to be the Holy Spirit in her life as well. Amen. Because I'm looking at it from my perspective. But listen, we both are in Christ. We are both are hearing from Christ. And his timetable is not necessarily mine for hers. Amen. Nor is it hers for me. And so we allow each of us to be obedient to God as he points out, as he shows. In verse 32, he says, since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? He says, if this man were not of God, he could do nothing. 
And, and listen, in the short span, this guy who one moment was begging and was blind, it almost seems like his, his spiritual intellect been kicked up. And, and, and listen, he's beginning to spout something that I dare say had been in for quite some time and now is coming out. In verse 34, it says, They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born, look, in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. In other words, these Pharisees are, look, this boy is hitting, he's hitting on some truth. And it's an amazing thing about folk and truth. When you begin to get in their kitchen, they begin to come up with all kinds of excuses. And listen, I get it, and I used to give it. I, listen, Brother Ralph, I gotta go. I, 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 I'll talk to you next week. Uh, uh, listen, man, I, I gotta run. Good to see you. I, I gotta get out of here. Look, I used to do the same thing when the Spirit was speaking to my heart and was trying to entrench himself in where I was living, that I used to do what I used to call the holy dance that I would dance around everything under the sun. And, and listen, when I was living with my wife, we weren't married, and folk were coming our way, and, and they were hitting on that. And, and I would say, hey, man, how, uh, how's your mother? Has she been sick? And, and I would change the subject because I did not want what I thought them in my kitchen, but in reality, it was the Lord in my kitchen. Amen. And I Amen. thank God that he got in my kitchen and because I needed him there. And ultimately, he was going to use some folk to help me to see and understand as they planted spiritual seeds in my life and in my heart. In verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? And guys, what we see here is that the Lord had already healed him physically and even planted some spiritual seeds in his heart. We see that coming out. He's almost preaching to these Pharisees. He's not worried about these guys because he knows he's been blessed by the best. And the Lord comes along and, and it's as if he's going to complete what he's already started. He never leaves anything undone or have done. And he asked them the question, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? And he answered, verse 36, and said, Who is he, Lord, and that I might believe on him? And, and listen, we see here that he's right in his kitchen. He's messing around with his heart, and, and he's getting ready to be a big blessing to his heart. And in verse 37, and Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And, and listen, what Christ is saying, in other words, look, I am the Christ that you've been talking to me, and he is indeed the one that has healed you. And look, his heart's already been prepped. We can tell by the way he's speaking to these Pharisees. And in verse 38 it says, And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Hallelujah, guys. That's a blessing. And listen, just like the young lady I was telling you about, Michelle, how she was chopping at the bit to know the God of the Bible, did not quite know or have a true understanding of, of, of the entrance of him, but once he was reported or, or once he was, was, was prepared to her or presented to her, she realized who he was and she couldn't wait to grab hold of him. Amen. <laughs> what must I do to be saved? And then sucked Jesus down like he was a drink and, and listen, couldn't get enough of him. And hallelujah now, guys, her life will never be the same. And the lives of all who heard will never be the same as the Lord has placed some seeds in their hearts. And man, it's a blessing. Oh, hallelujah, it's a blessing to know the God of the Bible and to know that he cares enough so this whole world that he has created, this whole universe that he has created, and everything that has to keep going, and, and, and listen, he's keeping that going all by himself. And to know that one little soul such as we, that he cares enough to keep us straight, to, to, to keep us and let us know when we're going faulty, to bless us with blessings that, that, listen, we haven't even asked for. And, and I dare say, guys, if we were able to look in the heavenlies and see the spiritual battle, how, how Satan's angels and God's angels are battling, we'd probably have a heart attack. 
But God's taking care of all that. He does not need us to see what's going on, but what I know and what this man know and what you ought to know. And, and hallelujah, what Miss Michelle knows is that once she was blind and now she sees it. Look, she ought to get an understanding of more. But from that place, that's where all great things begin, guys. Amen. Man, I thought I knew something. Larry, I thought I had it made. I thought I had the world wired. I thought I was getting over on everybody. And come to find out, I wasn't getting over on nobody except myself. And the Lord read me. And guess what? He read you as well. And he showed us how and who we really was and what our need was. And that indeed we had a need of a Savior. And guess what he did? He knew that. And he sent his only begotten son to be that savior. And he did that for you. And he, hallelujah, did that for me. And I can't help but to tell somebody where this beggar found food and was fed. In verse 38, he says, and he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment, I am come into this world that they would see not, look, might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And listen, he's talking about spiritual sight here, and he's talking about those that think that they can see because just like I was, just like you were, we thought we had everything wired. And in verse 40 it says, and some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? And listen, what they're doing, they're mocking Christ here. And in verse 41, he says, Jesus said unto him, If you were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. And listen, the problem is what he's saying to them is that, Look, you guys think that you can see. You think that you're spiritually astute. You think that because of your degrees and, and, and all your academic learning that you know something, but in reality you don't know anything, and the fact that you think that you have it all together tells me that your heart's not right and you don't have not, you're blind as a bat with sunglasses on a midnight day and indeed can't see for looking. And God, not just these Pharisees, but even the Pharisees of our time of our day. And all these intellects. And, and listen, many of our worldly leaders, <laughs> presidents of corporations and, and, and businesses, and, and, and listen, all these guys think that they have it all together. Movie stars and, and actors with all the money and, and listen, the, the houses on the hills and, and, and the mansions, they think they have it all together. But what I know about everything on this earth is that it will one day come to an end. And listen, the only thing that's going to be there, and forgive the analogy, they're going to be stripped bare and naked with them and their sin. And the question is going to come up, who is going to pay for your sin? And if Christ had not paid for it, then guess who gets the privilege of paying for it? They do. And if they pay for it, then they'll go to a Christless grave. And they will end up in hell. Yes, we will say that. And they will find themselves in a place where everybody there is not partying, but there's much wailing, hallelujah, and gnashing of teeth. We know that. And it's up to us to help others understand and know that as well. In verse 41, it says, Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now ye say, we see. Therefore, he says, your sin remains. Guys, there's much, much, much meat that I want to get into in verse or chapter 10. But I'm not going to open that today. I'm going to leave that alone because I need to get me deep in that. And we'll start that one next week. But what I do need is for all of you to pray one for another. What I do need is for all of you to keep in contact one with another. What I do need is that if there is an issue of sin in your life and you're struggling getting it out of your life, 
and you find you a prayer partner, you call me, you do, you go to the Lord, and you ask him to remove that from your life, from your heart, from your walk, so that you can indeed be blessed as God would have you to be blessed. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Larry, Brother Larry, if he would come up, and he's got a, a, a closing hymn for us, after which I will close out in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> hey, you know, uh, sometimes we we lose sight of the fact that God is with us no matter where we are. Amen. Whether we are up on the mountaintop <clears throat> and everything is going really great, or we're in the deepest part of despair, God is still there. I want to sing about that this morning for you. It's called God on the Mountain. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. You've got peace of mind like you've never known. Then things change. Down in the valley, don't lose faith, or you're never alone. And the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, you make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. We call the faith when we're up on the mountain. Talk comes in. When life's at its best, but in the valley of trials and temptation, that's when our faith is really put to the test. And the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When you make them right, and the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. God of the day is still God in the night. God of the day. rendition. Um, pray for Sister Jean because she's going to do likewise next Sunday. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this day that you have granted by your grace and mercy. How you've touched and blessed each of us, Father God, by your spirit and indeed by your word. And Father, we're praying for each and every one within the sound of my voice, Father, and even those that are on our prayer list. Father, we're remembering Sister Dolores and the issues of our heart and Father God, we also wish we could fix them, but we cannot. So we solicit you, Father, and we intercede for her and, and ask, Father, that your will be done in the midst of that. If heart transplant is possible, Father, we pray that, Lord, you bring about a donor. If the surgery, Father God, is possible, Lord, we pray that you raise up a surgeon. And, and Father, we just pray that you work it all out in the name of Jesus Christ. We are still praying for Sister Wyrick and, and her family, Father God, and, and the ailments of, of her recuperation that she's going through, Father, that you would touch and bless her in a mighty and a special way. 
We're praying for the Reginaldo family, Father, and those that are here and those that are in California, dear Lord. We, we pray for Mr. Reginaldo in regard to his cancer issues, and Lord, you know all about it, and we pray in the midst of all this that you get all the honor, praise, and glory, Father. We're praying for Jennifer and, and for John as they travel that way, Lord, that you'll even give them an uneventful flight, that you allow it to get there safe and sound, and Lord, allow them to minister to that family in a way that's pleasing in your sight, Father. Souls are at stake, and we pray that you will give them the words to say. We're still praying for our brother John Salter in regard to his recent ailments, and, and Father, we thank you for healing him, and, and, and we know that even now he's getting better day by day. We're praying for the persecuted church, Father God, throughout this world, Lord, that you will bless them and help them to continue to look up to you, who's the author and finisher of their faith as well as for our missionaries, Father God, who are on the road throughout this world. Father God, we're praying a special prayer for Michelle and her cancer, and, and Father God, for the Cates family, dear Lord, remembering Matt, that Father, by your spirit, that what you have started in that household, that you allow it to be infectious, Father God, and allow everyone that's in that house to catch that same righteousness that Michelle has caught from your son, Jesus Christ. Bless them in a mighty way. And Lord, for this congregation, Lord, you know what they stand in need of. And our prayer is that you will meet all of us at our needs. Show us the path you will have for us and bless us to be obedient to those paths. And Father God, we will be ever so mindful to give your name all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory in all that we do and say on this day and every day as we pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. And let the church of God say, Amen. amen and amen god bless you all thank you for your attentiveness there's some snacks over there and and, and, and cindy and, and our mom has brought extra snacks so i guess they figured we wasn't fat enough so, so we, and, and we don't want to disappoint them so we're going to help them out and, and guys please be mindful in your bulletin we have the Lord's address and when you think about it, please send her a card, or and if you haven't signed this card, make sure you sign, you sign the one that we collectively signed. But when you think about her, send her a little greeting card or, or something just to let her know that you're thinking of her. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you.